Hour, Trading Hour, with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And, uh, oh, okay. It doesn't like this. It says, uh, I need to buy nitro if you're in the uh, control room. Uh, grab something. Okay, there it goes. Eh, I wonder if I need to reboot. Everything's acting a bit weird. Hopefully that is live now. Okay. As always, it's always good for another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour, where we come together at the appointed time. And, of course, that didn't work either. So what do we have here? Oh, there it is. I just couldn't hear it. Did we do it again? Let's do it again. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Okay, so we're back to that. Let's get back to this. And we'll get on. Of course, uh, as we start the show, some very interesting things. We're down 103 on the S&P cash. Uh, it is Friday. But volume for a 100-point move on the S&P cash, six point, it, we're, we haven't even hit 6.5 billion shares yet. So there aren't a lot of people trading this. Uh, you would think probably we'd end up with 15 billion shares today on a 100-point move. Um, I'm, I'm suspecting that we, we've talked maybe about the last two or three weeks about the very high uh, Blackpool numbers that it's uh, the big guys on Wall Street doing a lot of the trading or much more of the trading that they have than they have in the past. So is that why volumes even on huge days like this can't really get going uh, much of anywhere? Um, you would think that if everybody was bailing today that there would be something much bigger in the way of volume. So that's a little interesting. Uh, of course, a lot of people uh, blaming uh, Powell and the Fed this morning for the huge move. Now, if you watched it, because I was uh, watching the, the speech on Bloomberg, uh, at the same time down the side, they had the chances uh, for a three-quarter percent interest rate hike. And they would cycle between that and some other stuff and even the interest rates in Europe. And what I thought was very interesting uh, was that we kind of sold off a little bit. Then we kind of came back and then we took off real hard to the downside. Now, uh, in the liner notes on Bloomberg, uh, apparently Christine Lagarde uh, had something to say. It wasn't public. Uh, but she was uh, with some movers and shakers, and we saw the uh, chance of a ECB rate hike of three quarters of a percent go from about 20 percent to about 60 percent before the markets closed in Europe. So I'm wondering if why Powell probably got the ball rolling. Was it a lot more about what Christine Lagarde said about interest rates in Europe? Was she hoping that he'd be a little bit more dovish so she could? Uh, and, of course, then we saw uh, pretty much well, – let me go ahead and get it up here. Um, get up the – let me see here. Okay. We saw a massive swing – for the dollar, in fact, we're pretty much at uh, the day high. Uh, we got down to almost 10s. Eh, let's call it 107.52 on the dollar index. Uh, that was eh, just around a little after his presentation. Uh, we've gone all the way back up and through the highs of days of a few days ago. We got up to 107.75, uh, I think. Let me see here. Here, one oh. Well, let me put it up here. Uh, two, two, two. And two, two, okay. One oh, yeah, one oh seven. 
what is that, 108. 775 for the high of day. Uh, we're not really backing off of that. So are those things combined? I probably should know a little bit more about what the ECB is doing. Haven't paid a lot of attention. Always kind of looked at uh, it as the uh, tail on the dog. Maybe uh, the tail is wagging the dog these days, uh, but uh, did pay uh, very close attention to Bloomberg's. Little, you know, they have a lot more stuff on the side than CNBC. I don't tend to watch all the minutia of that stuff, um, but uh, they did have some crawls later talking about Christine Lagarde at the ECB making some comments right after uh, Powell's comments, and we'll find out. It, well, apparently, they weren't public, so they didn't publish them i tried to google them all i could find is that she did make some comments and at that point we started seeing a massive stampede uh for interest rate futures for the ecb so did she not present them correctly did powell not telegraph her and uh you know you know maybe with some morse code tell her that well i'm going to probably be some hawkish here Maybe she thought she talked him out of it. I mean, there could be a lot of stuff going on out here. But um, just from the reaction, I don't think you can say that it was uh, the Fed alone. And maybe there isn't as much coordination going on between the uh, people on the other side of the pond and us as we think some. Or think so. Anyway. Uh, you can give me a call today at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message in the den, which is all quiet right now on the Western Front. Uh, so that's part of it. Um, we've got some other stuff. Uh, one of the, the uh, books I loved best as a kid and as an adult, I still go back to them from time to time, is the uh, Sherlock Holmes um, I'm uh, I'm not a fan of most of them. I liked uh, Elementary. I thought that was a good TV show and, and well done. Wasn't a big fan of a lot of the Sherlock Holmes things. Really did like the uh, uh, Cumberbun. What's his real name? I always call him Cumberbun. Cumberpatch. Uh, the, uh, I like the uh, ones that the BBC did a few years ago. I thought that they were excellent. Uh, a little bit more stylized uh, than probably one would think with uh, Sherlock Holmes, but still done extremely well. But one of the uh, big things on there was uh, uh, a uh, homage uh, to the original book, uh, Hound of the Baskervilles. I think it was in that. Uh, about, uh, or was it the other one? Yeah, I think it was that. Anyway, the clue was that uh, a dog barked at anybody he didn't know, but someone came in and killed somebody. The dog didn't bark. So you can infer that someone that knew the person that was murdered uh, was the one who did it. That's kind of what we're looking for today is in, in being inferred. We'll be back in a movie. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. Hopefully we're back. I uh, have a little Skype issues at the moment. Uh, yeah, but uh, okay, we are back. We've got a few things going on here. Hopefully everything else is there. But uh, let's see what they doing here. Ah, they did. They moved it on me, the dirty little rats. Okay. So let's see if that doesn't help us everything and then we'll help we'll move that that probably will help okay that makes a lot more sense they move the uh, settings between the microphone and the camera icon at the bottom of the screen nobody can leave stuff just well alone in software can they they're always out there playing with something uh anyway uh let's go ahead and do a little bit of history and we'll move on It is history repeating. And on this day in 1991, Linus Torvalds, he's uh, up there in the fjords. Uh, anyway, he posts a message to the Internet News Group and says, what would you like to see the most in Mimics, which was kind of a the predecessor to uh, kind of a Unix version uh, that was kicking around at the time. This is the first announcement that he's working on an operating system that one day will become Linux, kind of named after him, Linus and Linux. Uh, I know a lot of people talk about using it. Of course, it probably has 80% of the business of web servers out there now uh, at one level or another, Red Hat, uh, Linus, uh, Linux. So it's become a huge thing. Of course, it's uh, part of the Free uh, Software Foundation. And it basically exists because uh, 
about 2,500 loosely affiliated uh, folks uh, work on it and make it better and don't really charge for it. There are companies like Red Hat, which IBM bought, and others uh, that uh, help support it and do uh, additional work that maybe the people don't have the talent to do uh, that are around it for free. Uh, people ask me from time to time if I'd move my system to Linux, and if there was software for trading on it, I'd probably be more likely to do it. Uh, it is a little less well-tested, uh, mostly because uh, people that use it tend to be on the high end of the spectrum for uh, abilities in actually uh, working with it. Uh, they don't tend to be at the base level. So there isn't a lot of uh, what you would call beginner versions of it. Uh, the one thing that I, when I use it that bugs me to no end is that Linux or Unix is built to, to run with multiple people using the same computer at the same time. So just about everything is limited uh, for speed in some way or another. Especially when I have it, I do have a machine that's dedicated uh, to it for some of the stuff I do. Uh, but probably the most interesting thing is uh, when I copy something uh, to a thumb drive, like right here on my machine, it is lickety split as fast as the USB thumb drive will work. I can put something on that, and because they want to share resources on the computer, it may, you know, something that takes me 15 seconds on a thumb drive on my Windows machine or under Windows operating system may take four minutes or five minutes because literally everything is shared on a machine, and they're just assuming there's going to be more people wanting to do more things. So it is different. And it works much better for something where you're sharing a, one computer with a lot of folks, like web services. It, does it work? Yeah. Could you get by? Yeah. Is Windows that expensive? No. But uh, certainly when you run into problems, there's less likely you're going to find a, 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 a driver for particular hardware. It's probably more likely that you're going to have uh, loose support for older hardware. If someone doesn't want to work on it for free, uh, you know, kind of the same thing happens with Microsoft, uh, but uh, to a lesser extent. And everybody carps about that, too. But uh, a pretty good thing. Is it a direct replacement for trading? Probably no. It's a little tougher. I know some people use Macs. Again, a lot of the software that some traders use, not available on those platforms. But uh, on this day in 1991, an alternate system based on a community doing it mostly all for free and occasionally some people like Red Hat coming in and doing some major fixes that uh, other folks can't do uh, just because of time or money or uh, access to hardware. So you get uh, a little bit of everything out of it. 877-927-6648. Uh, somebody says you're developing a mission-critical application. Linux is the way, not Windows. Well, it certainly depends on what you're doing. Um, there are some mission-critical stuff that blows up on Linux just the same. Now, generally, when you get a decent working copy of Linux, you pretty much stick with it. You don't want to update too much stuff because it has uh, the same thing with Windows. You get the wrong update, and everything breaks. So, yeah, is it more likely to work on something as a server? It certainly is. But uh, access to software for most people at home, like uh, Word and Excel and a lot of those other things, although you get that for free with Linux, it always has just a few things that you want to do that, of course, are only available on Windows and with Microsoft Office. And, you know, is it that expensive? No. Windows Office now you can get for, what, 60 bucks a year for your whole family, up to eight, eight people? I think that was a special this week that I saw. So is it worth it? It really depends on what you're working on. And if you're talking about uh, uh, what I do, which is mostly write software for myself, uh, always about 10 times easier 
to write with Windows uh, and Microsoft products. If you're a small developer, as you become a bigger developer and you've got thousands of programmers, uh, the cost of actually doing that is fairly expensive and why they tend to use free things like Linux and others. Anyway, we'll come back in a minute. We're keeping an eye on the volume and the movements of the market. We'll get in, get into some of the stocks that are up on a bad day. And as we talked a little bit earlier, uh, the dog that didn't bark, if you can have a horrible day today and it's not uh, like uh, crude oil or something like that, and you've got a good day on a bad day at BlackRock, you want to pay attention to it. We'll do that when we return. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're discussing with the engineer where you have to actually adjust things for your camera, that kind of stuff. And, of course, uh, you would think you'd go to Logitech app for the webcam, but no, no, no. You can only do it inside Skype, and they keep moving the little buttons around and hiding where the, all those adjustments are. So you got to every time they have an update, you got to go hunt it down. And, uh, again, yeah, you can adjust that stuff. It just doesn't have any effect on Windows 11. That's uh, all moved now to the app that controls your webcam and your microphones and everything else. Uh, anyway, as we said, uh, we're watching what is fairly light volume. We're at the bottom of the hour, and we still uh, were under 6.8 billion shares on the day. So again, we're getting some big whacks out here in the market. 
but not that much. When we look back at the uh, actual uh, indexes, uh, we've lost uh, 4,100, which is interesting. No volume, well, let me put it this way. The volume isn't coming in any stronger as far as we can see, or at least I can see. Uh, historically, the Dow, now down about 750, uh, has hits about 800. And over the last two or three years, that's been a kind of a good gauge uh, that you're washed out about as much as you can wash out a, a uh, market in one day. Uh, down 109 in the S&Ps, NASDAQ's off 407, crude oil. Uh, again, market didn't look like it was ready for whatever happened, and I'm looking at what ha uh, at uh, maybe if there's a little uh, uh, tit for tat maybe happening with the ECB, uh, maybe more uh, work over the weekend. Uh, gentle reminder that I'll be off and back on the 6th of September. So I'll be off on vacation. Uh, any newsletters and updates continue even though I will not be on the air or sitting around watching a machine, I'll be able to watch the market on my phone and uh, do anything that uh, I would regularly do for my subscribers, just uh, not on the air issues. Anyway, uh, gold down 22 on the day. Uh, probably, uh, as I said, interesting to see the movement uh, for uh, – Electronic Arts and some of the other uh, companies that are in the uh, computer gaming space, not the iPhone, uh, Android gaming. They really, that's kind of a, a strange business. Um, these uh, big uh, companies like EA, who have budgets for a single title that are 250 or $350 million, much more profitable, of course. You buy a game for 50 or 100 bucks. Uh, you buy a movie ticket for 10. And of course, so you can play hundreds and hundreds of hours on one of these games. So, kind of a good value. Uh, a lot of people talking up Electronic Arts and, uh, and the others in this space today. And uh, on a bad day where the market's getting pummeled, we see Electronic Arts uh, on a very good day. We'll see what. The actual numbers are okay. It's up four and a half percent. One thirty-three forty-four is the last tick I see, and uh, and at worst it was at one thirty-two today, a high of one thirty-five eighty-four, uh, one thirty-five eighty-five. So back up to the previous high, gave a little bit of that back, but uh, still a fairly good day. I wanted to look uh, at uh, take two. Probably won't learn a great deal about individual stocks that are down today. You may learn a little. I have a feeling you're going to learn a lot more about stocks that are higher. And on this one, uh, not a huge day, but again, uh, getting a little bump almost on all of these games. Now, I think part of this is uh, some articles over the last day and maybe even into today that talked about how video cards coming down mean that probably people uh, in price and availability means that people may be buying uh, those cards and buying expensive, at least expensive for most people, games, uh, those 50 to 100 to $150 games. I don't buy many. Uh, I bought Flight Simulator, the uh, professional version, for 120 bucks over the last year. I uh, bought U-Boat, uh, which is a U-Boat simulator. I bought a tank simulator. I think those uh, 50, 60 bucks maybe. I don't buy a lot. I buy a lot that I can play a great deal and generally buy myself. I don't want to play a bunch of snot-nosed kids that are yelling each on each other or at each other through the headsets. But uh, certainly... Uh, not a bad day out here. You do have a higher volume high in take two, 137.43. And that may, you know, the the bad news for NVIDIA and AMD may be the very good news for these companies uh, in the uh, coming months through Christmas. 
Uh, if you just looked at the chart for AMD today, probably wouldn't think a great deal about it. Not a great deal day on this one already. Yesterday you had 61 million shares. Right now you got about 46. So you're probably going to come up with the same amount of volume. It's not bullish, uh, so to speak. Uh, earlier in the day I was watching this and it had just a horrific amount of people that were short. Yeah, there's. EA to buy Amazon talking about buying EA. I don't think that's going to pass uh, the uh, Federal Trade Commission. Uh, <laughs> we're one of the kids in uh, the pro, uh, pro trade and war games. Uh, well, let me put it this way. I never broke into any federal institutions. Oh, that was kind of stupid. But... Uh, Back then, nobody really had security, and there weren't real laws against it. Uh, so a lot of people did spend a lot of time on other people's websites. I was an expert on the phone company's uh, system called, uh, what was it, Kronos, back in the day. And uh, eh, so you could do things like make free phone calls and stuff like that, but there wasn't a lot that you did, or you can even do back then uh, to uh, cause a huge amount of problems. But uh, making free phone calls was kind of the big thing back then. You could modify a little phone dialer uh, from Radio Shack uh, for about a dollar uh, to make the tones uh, that made these tones that uh, sounded like nickels, dimes, and quarters. So you never really had to pay any more. Uh, there were those days. But, uh, eh, didn't really do anything else. Uh, youthful indiscretions, as they like to say. Okay. Uh, oh, anyway, we looked at those two. Yeah, anyway, uh, AMD, is it a big day or a blowout? No. Like I said, the volume tends to be very light, both up and down. Um, let's take a look at Amazon real quick since they brought it up. Eh, you're back in the gap. Actually, this thing probably wants to come to about 127. That'd fill this gap higher with some decent volume. So 149 million shares back on the 29th. You're coming back into it today with 32 million shares. So could you find some fairly good support about halfway into this gap down? I think you can. Anyway, we'll return in a minute. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. We turn to talking in the den about hacking phones and everything, and I don't think a lot of people know that uh, Steve Wozniak, or Steve, yeah, Steve Wozniak of Apple fame, and Steve Jobs uh, both financed the building of their early computers by making little devices that were called uh, blue boxes and black boxes for hacking phone calls for free and making long-distance phone calls for free, uh, sold them to the mob, and that's how they raised a lot of the early cash to actually start the company. So it's, you, you, always, uh, you always have to look back into the, into the past. Some people were a little bit uh, uh, iffy with their, uh, their morals back at the starting of a, a lot of their companies. Uh, I think Bill Gates, actually his dad threw a bunch of money at him. So he didn't actually need the money as much. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Apple started by uh, making devices to make free phone calls for the mob. Uh, and uh, eh, I don't think Wozniak has denied it as much as he's occasionally brought it up himself over the years. But, uh, yeah, a lot of... A lot of gray area there, uh, but uh, yeah, early in the day, we had black boxes, blue boxes. Every there were a bunch of different ways that you could hack different uh, phone uh, systems, and it depended on where you lived in the country. Remember all the little bells that got split apart? A lot of stuff out there. But uh, yeah, in, in my time, the thing was to take apart the Radio Shack uh, dialer. It was a uh, little thing about the size of a pack of playing cards that had a little speaker in it that would just play tones and the idea was that you were supposed to put all your phone numbers in it and you could just hit a couple of buttons and it would dial all the long phone numbers if you were a salesman on the road or something like that well you could change it put in like two different resistors and a diode and solder it back up and for 10 or 12 bucks he had you had one that would work on most of the systems across the country and uh, of course that was probably 1980 82 ish I think when that came out from uh, from uh, Radio Shack and of course the feds made Radio Shack quit selling it but uh, everybody that knew what was going on went out and bought one right away in the hacker community but uh, not a lot of people doing bad stuff. The really bad guys uh, figured out how to uh, credit card early on, and they spent most of their hacking activities stealing stuff at a very large scale. 877-927-6648. So anyway, uh, looking at Apple here, down. These tend to be uh, hurt a lot more, but again... Uh, we don't have blowout volume yet. Maybe that comes in before the end of the day. Microsoft, uh, kind of an ugly candle out here today. Uh, yesterday, you had 16.5 million shares. Today, you only have about 
11.6. So could you get 16 maybe if we get a bad enough close out here? But my guess is we close at 4,100 um, and get a 10-point bounce before the close. Uh, as people probably come out of it. Uh, there's some actual stocks that don't look too bad. Uh, and uh, I'm going to buy one of them probably at the close. We'll see how that turns out. If it closes, a, if it gets to the close at a certain price, I'll probably pick it up. But uh, now if you're probably looking to buy the indexes, I don't see anything quite yet. Maybe Monday morning. Uh, got a question to take a look at Avago. Uh, <laughs> uh, Zach asks if I want to buy this uh, thing, crush things with my tank. Uh, now, it's a video thing. I don't know what that is. Anyway, uh, Vago, well, it's not quite, uh, Tim, it's not quite railroad tracks, but close enough for government work. You'd like it to have been just a little bit higher on uh, Vago out here. Uh, but again, you want to have at least the same volume, if not more than the day before it, for what they call a tweezer top or railroad tracks. And those are two candles that are just opposite, either um, bullish on one day and bearish on the other, and about the same price. Uh, this one's just a little lower, but, you know, a lot of these chart patterns, you just kind of have to squint a little bit and take a look. Uh, one of the things is you want to have at least the same volume on the second one, if not more, to confirm. Yeah, yesterday you had 1.7 million shares for Avago. Today, just 814,000 so far. So, again, uh, not good You're going into a weekend. I think a lot of people are a little bit scared that they're not exactly sure what's going on. As I said, I've got one theory with that whole ECB thing, but I haven't figured out exactly uh, what else is going on. Uh... Okay. Okay. Uh, take a quick look at the SMHs out here for Ron. Um, you went up on the twenty seventh of July. You did so on 5 million shares. Right now you're down on about 3.1 million shares. Um, you've got that gap. So maybe you get into that gap on Monday morning and find some kind of low. Uh, is this the end of the world kind of stuff? No. Um, it's not uncommon to get a light volume week like we're going to come along and see everybody get short today and maybe even on Monday and then the market not move at all and everybody just has to kind of cover and you get a short squeeze into the Friday. I'm kind of looking at that scenario for my plays next week. Uh, but uh, if you're trying to get me all into the world kind of stuff, eh, markets go higher, markets go lower. And I'll be right a certain amount of times and wrong a, a certain amount of times. But uh, the, right now, does the chart look horrible? Not to me. Um, now, if we look at something on a much broader basis, SMH, uh, let's talk about the SPY. One of the reasons I didn't get active this morning uh, was that the option market makers had a wide move uh, in the SPYs from about 430 all the way to 400. And there wasn't a lot to say one way or the other going into it. Uh, there weren't a lot of really good places to say, hey, this is where support's going to come in. There was some very minor support on both and resistance above uh, higher and lower. Uh, but uh, they still really haven't focused or congealed on a number here late in the day. So I'm going to wait. Maybe we get it before the end of the close. Maybe it's Monday morning. But 
uh, we'll see. But uh, not surprised to see a very light volume week maybe turn in to some squeezes with as many people that is shorted today. We'll be back in a Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Got a question on the IWM and... You're into this candle from the 5th of uh, August, and uh, the low of the day on that one was 187.17. Wouldn't be surprised to see it challenged uh, on Monday. Maybe that is the end of it, but uh, you could see that maybe happening today, too. Uh, anyway, you had 18.5 million shares on that day, you got 15 million shares today. So you're probably gonna run 20 million shares by the end of the day, probably. So you're gonna be a little bit more, which means that you probably wanna test that low of, uh, to, to, let's just go back here, just a little bit better. You kinda wanna look at that low, which is that candle of the 5th of uh, August, right? Yeah. And let's see, 18 and a half million shares. So you don't want it to uh, bust that. But maybe you find, I think maybe you find a little weakness uh, Monday morning. Everybody comes back and it shorts the living daylights out of, of the market or a lot of individual stocks. And then the market could just stop. And those folks slowly get squeezed out before the end of the week. But uh, if you don't see a lot of volume come Monday morning, probably telling you a little bit. 
Uh, Matt asks uh, uh, on Meta. Uh, let's see, what does he say here? Uh, now that, that Zuckerberg has thrown the FBI under the bus, uh, do you think he's going to get a horse head in his bed? Well, eh, you never know. Certainly, uh, he was on uh, on uh, a podcast and uh, kind of answered some questions that I'm kind of surprised that he uh, did. Uh, as I said, I think the guy, he's selling his property in San Francisco. He's buying more in Hollywood. I think he's getting ready to go out the door. So uh, he may just be cleaning up a bunch of stuff uh, and giving some plausible deniability for all the lawsuits uh, that have been circling out there for a while. So when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you back on the 6th of September as I'm off on vacation. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most.